Hello, welcome to Family Business World. I'm Dr. Dale Caldwell, your host, and I have a friend and uh, a, a fellow host, uh, Mike Ferraro, the CEO of Bridging the Gap, who has a show many of you may have seen called Bridging the Gap. That was actually my first exposure, and so I thank Mike actually for uh, helping me have a show. Uh, hello, Mike. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing wonderful, Dale. Thank you for having me on your show. It's a pleasure. It's an well, honor. Well, it's a pleasure, and it's been great just getting to know you, and I've learned so much from you. So there are so many different ways we can take this this conversation. So what's Bridging the Gap for the audience? What is Bridging the Gap? Sure. So Bridging the Gap is a 501c3 nonprofit. It's really designed to, to help open doors for military veterans, but it expanded to the military community at large. So we opened the door, helped them with career coaching and career transition. Now more than ever, it's, it's going to be needed given the economy and 42 million people laid off. It's going to be very competitive out there. And, and, and already Bridging the Gap has, uh, has placed over 600 people in jobs, 600 veterans in jobs because of your programs. Is that, is that about the right and, number? And, uh, it's, it's, it, we're close to 600 okay. over the last okay. four years, but more than that, we, we've helped over 2,000 in helping them with resume support and getting ready for interviews and even getting them you know, other resources that they can learn about, like for instance, helping them do their profiles on LinkedIn as well, all for free. We don't charge a dime for, for anything that we do. Well, so much that you've done, you've done for, uh, for the military and, you know, as you know, I'm executive director of the Fairleigh Dickinson University Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And, and uh, one of our programs is Veterans Launching Ventures. We'll talk about your participation in that, but we're going to partner with you on, on bridging the gap. But before, I want the audience to hear your, your incredible history. So, so, Mike, where were you born? Where did you go to school? And how did you end up, you know, in the veteran world? Sure. So I was born in Queens, New York. We moved down to Howell Township in New Jersey uh, back in the 60s, late mid 60s, sometime around 67, somewhere around there. And went to school in, in grammar schools, high schools at Howell Township. And uh, then at 18, joined the military my senior year in high school and uh, delayed enlistment and went in to be an aircraft mechanic. And so active duty Air Force uh, was stationed all over the country. My last summer was in. Uh, the Netherlands. Uh, so after about five years of active duty, I crossed over to the Air Force Reserve and went full time with them until 32 years, until I was turned 50. Wow. And uh, during that time, I flew for 12 years on cargo planes and then had the honor of being the command chief master sergeant for the joint base at McGuire Dix Lakehurst. Wow. But then kept, kept screwing up and getting promoted. Uh. <laughs> before you know it, I found myself. I'm in, um, I'm in the command chief role for 28,000 airmen. Uh, yeah, so come, tell me about that. What does that mean? So you're the command chief for the, for the layperson. What does, that, what does that mean? So basically it means I am the eyes and ears of the enlisted um, uh, corps, which is about 80% of the military right. that make up the military. And my job was to basically to oversee the health and well-being of all those enlisted, make sure that strategically and tactically, that they can do their job. Wow. And so I report to a two-star general and be able to get some of those roadblocks and those challenges out of their way. Wow, and, and so this, what geographic area was this, the 28,000 people? Um, about uh, from New Jersey to Guam, so it was pretty far. <laughs> New Jersey to Guam, holy cow, that's... Uh, 18, 18 installations. Unbelievable, so did you do a lot of traveling? I did, yeah. I did, all over the place, uh, and, and we would go for two, three days at a time, so it wasn't like it was a long time where we would go, just just a couple of days at a time. So nobody can question your military chops, so, so you, you, you left that, working for a two-star general, what happened next, what did you do next? So so what happened for me was I had the opportunity to, uh, uh, to open up uh, Bridging the Gap for Veterans. And it started with another company called VIP Careers. Okay. And VIP Careers was a for-profit company that started in 2013. And then what happened was I was able to uh, sell that and because it was based on job shadowing. So I created this Patriot Fellowship for a three-day job shadow. It got, over, it got tremendous support. And then I was able to take that and, and then sell it and then consult for a couple of years and then started bridging the gap in 2016. Okay. So it was, it's been a nice, nice way to start from a for-profit to go to a non-profit as well. So, so the bridging the gap. So what is the gap referring to for, for those that don't know? What is, what is the gap? The, so the gap is really that transition piece when you're leaving the military right. and you're you going to civilian life. Right. But also it's for the gap for those vet, veterans who are unemployed or looking for a better job or underemployed 
in the in the civilian community. So they served their country, they've been out for a while, and we can help them across the board. So, so the, this Bridging the Gap program, I've had a chance to go to a, a few of them. What does a day consist of? Right? How long is it? What, what goes on with the program? Describe that for the audience. So we have a program called Top Gun, Ignite Your Future. And so what it is is a four-hour program, two hours of career tactics, techniques, and procedures on how to find a job. So we teach you by these 15-minute modules on how to do that. In between that, we have employers are coming up on stage and for a few minutes showcasing their, their company on why they're veteran-friendly, why they're going to hire. And then from there, we go into speed interviewing. So speed interviewing, that 10 minutes with an employer face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. with, with a resume or not, gets them a door open. It's a real interview. So, but the companies are in the class with us at the same time. So you get a chance to really network and understand you know, the civilian marketplace. Well, and what I like too is you've, you've had an, an, an actress teach you know, interviewing skills, and, and what are some yep. of the subcomponents that you have of that? Because it's really, it's a great program. Yeah, so, so understanding who you are, your knowledge, skills, and abilities, uh, uh, like a career assessment on who you are, uh, get, what is real mentorship? So we teach that, and how to, how to get engaged with companies that actually have mentorship programs that are wonderful. LinkedIn, uh, how, to, how to fireproof your resume, for instance, and that's an acronym as well. Fact, impact, result, and effect. We teach how to fireproof your resume so it gets a door open. And then employment readiness, you know, being in front of these companies and how to interview. Well, what, one of the secrets of your success is your relationship with the sponsors. You know, yep. you have, I mean, so many corporations and so many, I mean, literally they're sitting there for the four, four hours, they're watching people in the audience, they're interviewing them, they're offering jobs. What's your secret about getting, developing those relationships? So, so what I do is I use LinkedIn to the end degree. I, I actually friend people on LinkedIn from companies who are military working at that company. And I find out if they're veterans. So you can go into LinkedIn and just in the search box, put on military veteran, and you'll get a ton of, of people, a variety of companies all over the world. And I friend them. And I put in the inbox when I, when I wanted to connect with them, what, who I am, why am I connected to them? Make it very, very personal. Right. And a lot of times they connect with me before you know, we establish a relationship. And now we have 90 companies in my platoon. Wow. In, 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 in all hiring. Wow. Even wow. today, with the crisis going on, we got companies that are hiring. Wow, that's, that's great. And it's gonna get big, bigger and bigger. There's gonna be more and more right. jobs as we go on. I, I really feel good that things are starting to open up. I have the honor of being on Governor Murphy's New Jersey Restart and Recovery Commission. So every Friday we have a meeting, and so we kind of hear before everybody else does the things that are opening up. So. You know, the next couple of weeks, we'll get more, see more restaurants and other things, which is which yes. is key. So it's a perfect, perfect time. And and you and I have talked about since I'm at this entrepreneurial institute at Fairleigh Dickinson, and you're to really bring in the entrepreneurship piece to this this program. So, um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about is uh, you have ventured into another uh, business, the coffee business. Correct. And so how did that happen? And, and tell me about what's the, been the genesis of that uh, that program. Sure. So, so I was, I've been involved with a couple of different coffee companies over my life uh, in the last seven to ten years. And so what I've learned was that there's an opportunity there to, to really exploit because of the fact that people love coffee. And I found a way of how to get business to businesses to really step up and take part and really get involved in our company by offering them not just an ROI of helping them find veterans, but also helping them say thank you to to veterans by or, or military units or now public service like law enforcement, firehouses, EMS, and even hospitals and the frontline workers. And by buying coffee and then donating it. So so it's a tax deductible item because we're a 501 C three. Right. All the coffee is going to those units. So we created a, a relationship with a local coffee roaster in Bricktown, New Jersey that's got a wonderful pro, uh, a coffee blend. And, um, and when we went to them on this whole idea about bridging the gap and having a, a, our adopt a coffee pro program, they loved it. And so we were the only military related uh, coffee roaster, if you will. And so, so they're, co they're roasting our coffee under a private label, our label, and then we donate the coffee to these military units with the support of these corporations. Love and then on, on the back end, we're helping those companies find veterans to hire. Wow. 
So it's a very simple way. It's a product offering. And at the same time, they're getting a chance to hire veterans. And it's a tax, tax deductible because they're, they're not using it for their own consumers, their right. own employees. They're donating it. Wonderful. And so, when, and so the bridging the gap comes in for the hiring, right? Correct. The hiring. So it's a, good, it's a perfect partnership between the, right. two, the two nonprofits. And you've had incredible success since you started. When did you officially start and, uh, and how, many, so, how many organizations are you working with now? So we started with uh, in October. October last year. Yeah, it the program. wasn't too long ago. Yeah. And, we, and we did a pilot for a couple of months just to see how it goes. And right away we hit 10 to 12 people, 10 to 12 companies right first in 2019. And then what happened was in, um, in January, after the holidays, you know, people started to, to the business started to get back in, into play again after the holidays. All of a sudden, now I got over 50 wow. in our platoon. So we also went back to the companies that were part of our program, of our Top Gun program, and said, would you like to be a part of this as well? Now we got 90. Wow. We got 90 companies in our platoon. So we're going to make a big splash once we get past 100. Yeah. Make a big announcement on that. But uh, we're also looking at consumer base, too. To, to get it to food stores. The Boy Scouts are now selling our coffee. Uh, Junior ROTC and Civil Air Patrol, we're talking with them wow. as well to, for fundraising. Yeah. Amazon, we'll be with Amazon Fulfillment Center hopefully by the end of August. Oh, really? Really? Yep. And so now what does that look like? So if you say you're with them, what are, they're, they're the sponsor, what are they buying? So what happens is Amazon will support us by marketing our coffee on their website, on their portal. Right. And, and our roaster will then will roast coffee and then we'll manage the amount of inventory that goes to to uh, pick and pack at Amazon. Right. And, and so in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Wow. And so we'll, we, we have the whole dashboard. We can see what our inventory looks like that, that Amazon has on, on site. And so we will manage that flow, that logistics in in transit visibility, and they give us the tools for all that. They take a little percentage, but they're doing the picking, the packing, and the shipping. And yeah. then every two weeks they'll send us a check. Wow, wow, that's a great. I mean, you you really are just amazing at really connecting with these these companies. You know, one of the things I find with nonprofits is that so often they're so well-meaning and they're so compassionate about their their constituents. But they really don't know how to talk to the corporations who can fund them, and Correct. so you have that great ability to kind of talk to both sides of the. You know, so, what advice do you give for nonprofits that that uh, to talk to to sponsors? Yeah, well, I find you know networking, of course, is a generic term that right. people can use today to you know just network, go to networking events, and so forth. But when you talk to someone who's in a corporation, we got to look at the value of what value you're going to bring to that company. Right. Because you're going to ask for money, you're going to ask for something in kind. So if you if you can look at it from the perspective of what can you help that company with, what programs and services that you have that that company will benefit from, even though they're giving you money, you're not changing hands in the, in the sense of of you're gonna they're gonna buy something from you and then and then just you know one transaction. You want a long term relationship. Yeah. So by doing that, establish a a, a return on investment. And that would lead to, a, I think, a better business relationship and then also a friendship as well. Yeah, and, and as, as I said, I mean, it's not just about the business, it's about the friendship, it's about the relationship right. that you develop. Yeah. And you're, you're amazing at developing relationships. Yeah. I just find so many nonprofits are, you know, they love their constituents so much, they assume everybody loves them as much as they do. So they don't have yeah. to sell. They have to say, well, we're dealing with the homeless, and so we know you love homeless as much as we do, instead of really developing that relationship because. Because people really, even in nonprofits, invest in people that they know and like, right? Correct. And trust. And trust. Yeah, absolutely. And trust. Okay. Yep. The, uh, and, and so I, I want to I talk a little bit about uh, the, the small business. But before I know, you are a wine connoisseur, a wine maker. Talk, uh, well, yeah. We're actually going to take, take a break right now. But I want to come back and, and talk about wine. You've introduced me to a whole world of wine that I didn't even know about before. Absolutely. So uh, we'll, we'll take a couple minute break.
I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Hello everyone, I'm Mark Iorio. I'm the host of Rainmakers Roundup, right here on RVN TV. The show is about looking for people who are in competitive businesses that are doing something different and unique in the world of sales and marketing. Join me right here on Rainmakers Roundup on Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. and then again on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. right here on RVN TV. Today's show is sponsored by Dr. Welcome back to Family Business World. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell. If you haven't uh, been with us just now, we have uh, the wonderful Mike Ferraro, the CEO of Bridging the Gap. Uh, before break, we started talking about Mike as a wine connoisseur. So Mike, tell me, how did you get into wine and, and what are you doing with, with wine? It all started with my neighbor. Uh -huh. And so we sat on the porch one night and drinking wine and beautiful night and a nice summer evening. And we said, you know, we can make our own wine. We should, we should look into this. And so we found a wine school in uh, Dayton, New Jersey, uh, right near Cranberry. And uh, we found that we, the owner was phenomenal, Tom Nye, and he introduced us to wine, to make a wine. And uh, so that was 15 years ago. Wow. So it, it's been wonderful. So what happened was he moved on, he sold the business. And then I found uh, a group of Italian folks and some others, about uh, four of us, and uh, in Bricktown, New Jersey, in somebody's house. Mm. And so the old style way of making wine, uh, we make it at his house, and uh, we've been making a lot of wine, six now, barrels. Now, do you put your feet in the grapes? Do you stomp the grapes, or uh, how? We used to. We used to. Oh, right. oh, that's uh, it just takes too long. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we got a lot of grapes. We got 90 cases of grapes. Really, so, really? Yeah, that would be a long time. And this is California grapes? These are grapes from California? So you're, yep. you're creating California wine in New Jersey? Yep, and so we, we get uh, wine from Napa, Sonoma County, all those areas, Russian River area, and then we they they cut them from the vines, and within three, within seventy two hours, they're here in New Jersey. And, and so one of the one of the innovative things, and so for the family businesses out there that are looking for ways to connect with folks, one of the things that you did is you, you you've given a lot of sponsors the bottles of wine, right? That's right. As a thank you. As, as a thank you. So original, not not bought from the store. These are these are wine that you made. That is again the relationship that you're developing with customers, with contributors, and so on is is wonderful. So uh, that includes coffee. Okay. So so they get a little basket now with our coffee products, and then also with uh, with that. You you have really created this kind of universe of products that really uh, really works works well. Oh yeah, let me show you what the coffee looks. Yeah like. yeah let's yeah let me yeah bring bring some of the coffee. So here's the coffee box. Okay. This one here happens to be Army Strong. Okay, Army so Strong. Army okay. Strong right here, which Love is a dark it. roast. But this is our coffee. So we've got our logo on it. Okay. You see that? I love it. And, Love it. And then um, it, it, there's 24 pods in here. Okay. And so this is what we sell to businesses to donate. Wonderful. And then we also have bags as well. And uh, and the bags are going like hotcakes. Yeah, really? This one's called Stars and Stripes. Oh, nice. So, oh, I love it. I love it. So these, these are beans. Yeah. They also have Freedom Blend, which is our decaf. Okay. Freedom of... Free of, um, you know, caffeine. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I love and it's, it. It's going very well. It tastes great. And and um, so we have Army Strong, Aim High, Semper Fi, all the themes of the military. And so you can imagine, you don't want a Marine right. who's rough and tough right. drinking, you know, Coast Guard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's funny how we get into this right, these right. individual, you know, uh, military... The, the culture stuff yeah, together. The, the whole different cultures. The, uh, yeah, the exactly. that you were just saying. So bridging the gap is expanding now. You're looking to. Uh... Yeah. So, so uh, we've been in an office in Monmouth County for the last three years, um, and it's a single office that we had. But now, because we signed a lease in February to expand, and so now we're opening up bridging the gap for veterans and career 
Transition and Resource Center. So the center is going to be the first ever in New Jersey devoted to military. Wow. Resources for all military, active duty, guard, reserve, retirees, veterans, and families to find jobs. Wonderful. And so think of the unemployment office as America's one stops. This is going to be your one stop for military and be able to help you find jobs. We got companies that will come to our location, interview in our office. Wow. And we can do our speed interviewing there. We can set up, you know, interviews accordingly. And also, we can also do career orientations on the VLV. Okay, okay. Kind of give an overview of what the VLV will be about. So we can hold seminars on that. Homes for Heroes as well. Wow. Seminars on, on buying a home if you're military. All kinds of ways to, to, uh, to have resources available for the military community. Well, and, and again, one of the things for our audience, you know, one of the things that has admired me about you, you're always thinking about innovative ideas. You well, know, I got another one know. that's happening right now. Yeah, right. And, you're, 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 and I love that. And so as, as the new businesses, you've got to be coming up with new ideas because it's a yeah. new world. Yeah. So, so you remember the ice bucket challenge for some Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if you did that, but I did that back in the day. Uh -huh. And you donated, you donated money, ten dollars, fifty dollars, whatever it was you wanted to give. Yeah, so we, I'm involved with something that's going to be similar for frontline workers and small businesses. Uh -huh. And this is where family business comes in. Uh -huh. This is what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah, we're going to do something similar, but it's going to be about sports. Mm. So you and I can go out and play golf, right? Do yoga. You can play volleyball, basketball, whatever. Work out, run 5K, whatever it is you want to do on your own. Yeah. Take a picture of that. Uh -huh. you take a video of that. Uh -huh. You upload it to the site. You get a you, you the, a registration is thirty dollars. Uh -huh. You get a T-shirt and a mask. Uh -huh. The mask will say you know supporting frontline workers or something like that. Oh, wonderful! And the T-shirt is all about the frontliners. And then the money raised was going to go supporting small family businesses. Oh, wonderful! Uh, and also, to, you know, there'll be some, whoever's the most creative, there'll be awards for that as well. And so the woman that's putting this together asked me to be a part of the team. Okay. And so Bridging the Gap is going to be a part of this, not from the veteran perspective, but just from being, you know, the humanity perspective. And so we're going to be involved with that. So our logo will be part of this whole, this whole uh, thing. It could go viral, just like the Ice Bucket Challenge as well. Okay. Absolutely. Well, no, well now um, coming out, it's coming out in uh, late June. Oh, okay. So it's not ready now. I was going to say yeah. get the website, but if it's not ready now, but that's again for family businesses, you know, supporting yeah. family businesses, and and uh, you know, many of us. I have a foundation, the Dale Caldwell Foundation, where where we have a program called We Care, where people are donating, yeah. and we're actually for nursing homes and hospitals. Oh, and so, perfect. and there's not enough money. There's just not enough money to really do what needs to be done. Yeah. given the crisis but that's that's fantastic mike that's uh this, this is just to get you to exercise yeah just yeah. to say do something that you like to do the weather's be going to be nice and then you just do it on your time and then just know that you you donated something that's going to be a good cause so then the money will also buy gift certificates and things like that to hand out as well see that that's that's wonderful my daughter and i who's in studio now we play tennis you know as often yeah. as possible so we'll we'll do that with tennis that's yep. our uh, that's our thing. The uh, yeah. so now now as you know we, we run this veterans launching ventures program and so we yeah. uh, we have you know fall a spring a winter online and we're now doing a national online and you were you know we were lucky enough to have you in our spring class uh, for this coffee that you got it going and and so from a, from a, I, I can tell you as the director of the program but I want to hear from a student how, yeah. how did it go how was the our veterans launching ventures program. So, so first of all, the, the, the content was spot on. It was exactly what I needed as a business owner from being in business for several years. It, it, it helped enhance my program. I wasn't going for investor funding. I wasn't going for capital. But it, what it did is it focused me on my mission. Mm -hmm. And it also really defined some, some unique things that I wasn't thinking about on a competitive analysis and so forth. And also on logistics planning, as well as finance. It opened my eyes to some new financial things on a pro forma that I wasn't aware of or, or, or knew of. And so what, what also was good was the instructors or the advisors are incredible. The, the amount of experience and mentorship that comes from that was invaluable. And so now I have a personal relationship with my, with my consultant, my advisor. And uh, I know he's going to help me moving forward, you know. And also with the, I have the research, I could have the research to, to to talk to the others as well, the other advisors. So I feel like I have a living document with these great experts that can help me. 
Well, well Mike, thank, thanks for that. Again, thanks for being in the program. And just, just for those who, who don't know, it's a free program for any veteran or, or, or immediate family member of a veteran. You know, we have, uh, we had about 17 individuals, about 17 consultants. Shakti Kuntz, who um, is on our advisory board, has really volunteered her time to really develop up um, and tighten up our curriculum and dealing with, as you said, uh, developing every aspect of a business plan. Um, Sue Slavin, you know, who really is, has been the heart and soul of that program, Maura Panuski of my, my team. And uh, I mean, I've been so busy with family business stuff, I don't spend as much time with the VLV as they do. But it's just so great to hear. And, and, and what we're doing is we've created cohorts. I think this is cohort number 25 or so. Yep. And so, so the, our hope is that we have some very successful businesses coming out of it so that, that as you become successful, other people, you know, and that's what it is, that's what it's all about, this whole mentorship, this collaboration, um, and, and, and really, really growing. And so that's, that's, uh, that's wonderful. So what's we're next for to, the conference? We want to give the orientation, Dale, uh -huh. to, uh, at our center. Okay. We're going to provide a, a monthly program there where we can offer anybody who wants to register with us who's a veteran or military dependent uh, that can come in and we would give them a once over for oh, like nice. 45 minutes on what it's like. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Mike, that's great. That's, that's wonderful. And, and now, you know, we're doing it. So we've gone national right now. I think we have about 10 different states uh, represented and people that are interested because the, the advantage of Zoom, again, being innovative is say, hey, well, we're, we're Zoom now. Why don't we go national? Yeah. And so we've gotten a lot of response. Um, the, uh, so, so one of the things that I, you know, I think I want to talk to you about is um, you are such an expert at helping businesses hire veterans. You know, I think we should talk about doing a Zoom or even a series of Zoom to get some, some business folks who are, are there to hire and really have you share some of the expertise. This is what veterans are looking for. This is where you find them. This is how you deal with them. Because um, you'd be just perfect for, for that. What do, what do you think? What do you think about uh, that? I love, I love the opportunity because uh, we, we got the experience, but more importantly, we got the credibility. You know, we were, we were part of the Secretary of Defense Military Spouse Employment Partnership. I mean, you know, that's a big deal to be a part of that. We're also part of the Army's uh, Public and Private Partnership Program. Uh, so we have great credibility. We've we got proven results. We, you know, we're, we're right here on Fort Dix. Uh, now we, we have to go to a webinar base because the, the, the military is closed down there. Right. But um, we'll be back on base eventually. But we have we've proven that this this kind of program works. Well, well and, and again, we're we're unfortunately these things always go so quickly. But the one thing I want to mention, and and, and uh, I don't know if I sent you the article, but an article just came out that says keep the cash home. And I've been pushing for what I call a public spend program. And the yeah. whole idea is that every public agency in the United, really in New Jersey, but the United States should list how much money they're spending with veteran certified businesses, women certified businesses, and minority certified businesses. And the example I give for Jersey City, Newark, and Camden, they spend $2.1 billion on their budget. If 5% went to those businesses, that'd be $105 million in New Jersey and three school districts alone. That's the way to get businesses in small businesses. And America is a small business country. We need to really, really do that. So uh, any final, yeah. final word, Mike? No, you know, uh, bridging the gap for veterans is is really about opening that doors. Our, our mission is to is to help them be prepared and be well coached, so they can get a good job. They what they were looking for, and um, we've been so successful doing that over the last four and a half years. Uh, it's just an honor to can to, to to take it to the next level. Now, we, you know, now that we got forty two million and growing uh, laid off, we know we're going to get overwhelmed with a lot of a lot of people, you know, asking for our help. And um, we're ready. We're up for the challenge. And, and these veterans, like you, have served this country. It's our turn to, to really serve them. So, Mike, thank you so much for being on the on the show. And right. um, um, we will continue to talk. And thank you all for tuning in to Family Business World. We will see you next week.